So I've got myself here, guys, some figs that actually have split. There's a number of these. Um, of course, this is not uncommon in my humid climate, but this is actually an LSU Champagne, which is quite surprising. Um, here's one that's actually pretty good. It's a smaller one of a better shape to it. This one here actually is cracked down the side and has a little bit of mold on that crack. And if the interior of the fig is exposed in any way, it's really not good for fermentation, for mold, for the fig to continue to ripen, to actually get to the, perf the perfect ripeness level. And I had this, really there's a debate that goes on between a number of us uh, serious fig hobbyists. Um, we believe that growing them in the ground, if you have them in the ground for a number of years, they really dig themselves in well. Um, any change in soil moisture will just not be as dramatic, right? To get less splitting, we need a consistent soil moisture. That's really the key. That's the number one, the most important thing. Just kill the mosquito, guys. But uh, that is the most important thing. Uh, the next important thing is actually to have a drier soil. So you want a slightly less than moist or drier than moist, a consistently drier than moist soil. And if you do that, you're going to have success. And we've seen that in pots. I did that last year. We covered the pots with plastic and completely controlled every ounce of water that went into my pots. And I actually had the highest bricks, I had the highest flavor. Um, it was the best fig year basically ever because of that. And uh, it really made a huge, huge difference with the figs and the splitting and how long they even lasted on my counter. Um, it was amazing. And um, this year we have a number of them in the ground so we can sort of compare now. Well, they're getting some age, they're getting themselves dug in, getting their roots spread out. Because again, if the roots are all the way out to here, which I imagine some of them probably are, right? It's usually double the width of the canopy. So they're probably out to this, this, this spot right here. So any rain that hits this and also hits where the root ball is, you know, assuming the, the roots are spread out far enough, then maybe any big change in, in moisture in the soil is not going to be as big. And therefore, the older these trees get, again, they're not going to split nearly as often. So this is an interesting little observation this year in that my LSU Champagne, which is historically not a fig that does split, um, has split. So my in-ground trees here, a number of them, not just LSU Champagne, but also LSU Tiger. Some of the LSU varieties that were bred with Celeste, which is very quite, it's quite shocking. Um, again, they have, uh, large cracks in the side, as you can see there, or it has also split on the bottom. And then again, there's another one on the other side. This is LSU Tiger, by the way. Another big eye that has split. And this one over here also split. So um, I'm not necessarily writing off that the in-ground trees will not be more split resistant than a potted tree. I think if you can 100% control the water, you're going to have success with splitting. Um, but it's going to be a lot less work in the future, I think, with these in-ground trees. Here's LSU Huye. There's a minor split there. And that one hasn't ripened far enough yet to actually split. But um, yeah, that's what I'm getting at here, I think, is that I think in the long run, my theory is that these in-ground trees are going to do much better with moisture. So if you got a variety that does split or tends to split, planting it in the ground and then having it there for about four or five years, maybe three at the minimum, you may start to see some big changes um, in just how often it does split. And I think that's really the key. That's gonna be really important here for all of this because if I can't stop some of these varieties from splitting, then I'm gonna have to go with just the varieties that do not split. And believe it or not, for now, I'm actually downgrading um, LSU Huye and then also um, Tiger has already been downgraded and uh, LSU Champagne is going to get downgraded as well. 
So I would much rather have like this variety here, same amount of rain, same amount of problems as we've been having these last few nights, but it's not split. And it's basically indestructible. This is the uh, Moro de Caneva that I speak so highly of all the time. There's also um, actually a Campanieri over there that's got a number of figs on it. Hasn't split either. Let me show you. Here's some Moro de Caneva. They're beautiful. Actually, I could pick one of these if I wanted today. And then here's uh, some of the Campanieri, which is not immune to splitting, I found, especially because of the shape. But it's doing really well. Here's This is one that actually has a crack down the side, so maybe this one will be better than most. Here's another Moro de Caneva down here on a different tree. So in general, I think I'm just more hopeful for these in-ground trees, but I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not giving my opinion, my total opinion just yet, saying that these in-ground trees will split less uh, than a potted tree, but only because we have to wait, I think, a number of years before we'll really know. Um, but yeah, I think this really does, I think, um, open my eyes to a couple things. You know, as I said, the varieties that we're downgrading, but also this is um, opening my eyes, of course, to just growing figs in the ground here in this climate and what we can do about it in terms of the moisture, in terms of the humidity, in terms of that splitting, um, we should have success. Another one here that actually has an open eye and splits often is the, the Ronde de Bordeaux. So this one's almost done, believe it or not. We've fruited a, a lot of figs off of this and the squirrels are getting the rest of them, it seems like. But we had a really good harvest of Ronde de Bordeaux this year. And I haven't keeping you guys updated on the, the in-ground trees, but we will in the future. You know, um, this is a good glimpse, I think, into what's going on back here. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see everybody soon. Uh, take care. Hit that subscribe button for me. And uh, we'll see you guys for the next video. All right, guys, peace.